Greetings, brave souls. This is your GM in the Great Barrier. We are here today with Star Trek Adventures Aegis. You're joining us today for what will be part of the penultimate adventure of our second season, On the Horns, Part 2. Before we get started here, a few obligatory programming notes for those of you that ever want to join us. We run these live streams on uh, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. We are back to our normal play schedule. Uh, I know that some of the recent scheduling announcements were a little out of whack, and I apologize for that. One of those weekends was intentional due to daylight savings time. Oh, and hello, Elia there. I, uh, nice to see a friend from the Klingon Pop Warrior dropping by, who incidentally deserves a shout-out. I spend many a Saturday whilst prepping, enjoying the uh, fun of their variety streams. Right now I think they're playing some Dragon Age Inquisition on the uh, in the morning, so... Definitely something to check out. Also, a lot of Klingon translated music. It's it's great stuff. And I think they'd just been doing a... They'd been involved in a charity, which they'd hit the 10-year mark for. Uh, for those in the archive, link will be in the description for any of that. So we'll leave that aside for now. Uh, but as we get the session started, let's go into a quick recap. Uh, Aegis... Many months into a long-range expedition has begun to show some strains of its long voyage. Supplies, particularly uh, your energy supplies with antimatter, are beginning to wear a little bit thin. Uh, you've also taken a fair amount of damage between skirmishes with Klingons, Kazinti, Nausicaan pirates, all manner of just different conflicts along the way. Uh, it had gotten to the point where you were looking for a friendly port in what appears to be a very sparse area of space for anything of the sort. Uh, as you head further rimward, thankfully, Remora had known possible site as very specifically a Sulaban port operating in the orbit of Lystragon 7. Uh, unfortunately, as you arrived... You discovered that uh, this had not saved them from a raid by the uh, by the Kizinti. Pack that appears to have been stalking you this whole time has discovered and beaten you to this port. By the time that you arrived on hand, you found that they had three cruisers in the area and had dropped numerous uh, fighter si uh, fighter type shuttle pods, uh, and you had fought an engagement with them. Unfortunately, it looks as though most of the Sulaban did not survive, and those that were there were probably being transferred to their ships. You made a valiant effort to try and break through the skirmishing lines of uh, fighter pods, and even briefly looked to engage the cruisers with the captain and Remora about to lead a daring uh, raid on the outpost, hopefully to distract the Kazinti and maybe draw in the, uh, their warriors so that Aegis would be less threatened while you try to work out a plan to save the Sulaban. Unfortunately, the, uh, the Kazinti were a bit more uh, daring than you expected. Okay. One of their cruisers that had been detached from the station had angled around and just very, it like banked very hard going in for an assault. They bombarded you with a salvo of nuclear torpedoes, which has struck the forward segment of the hull. Uh, it is now completely depolarized. Blasts were taken, and you have suffered breaches to the ship's structural integrity, as well as to your sensors. Uh, on Back on the bridge, Shira was very nearly incapacitated when... Part of the bridge blew out right beneath her and left her somewhat injured. In an instant, before you could beam aboard the station, uh, 
Horn, with Shira's support, had given the order to escape before you could uh, engage the transporters. It is that moment where we are going to pick up. We're down in the transporter room. Captain, uh, you and the ship's resident helm officer by the name of Ramora, a, a Sulaban pilot, uh, the two of you stood in the transporter room ready to try and effect your daring rescue. But you were... Uh, you felt in the deck plates as the ship jumped to warp. And in a moment of frustration, uh, Sharp, we had left off with you just pounding your uh, the helmet of the EV suit you had strapped on into the, um, into the bulkhead, leaving a slight divot. Uh, that moment of anger is past, although you may still be smoldering. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Very much so. It's very hard to not to smolder. Yeah. Um, so just before we check in with the two of you, just to set the set the stage around you, uh, although you are in a relatively interior segment of the ship, uh, you are still noticing signs of the damage. There are uh, there are sparks in different places. There are there's venting of gases. Uh, a couple bits of. Uh, blown out conduit that uh, you could see in the cramped hallways um, and the lights are flickering a bit in the uh, in this part of the corridor near the alcove um, the ship rumbled pretty fiercely uh, before you made it to the transporter alcove uh, but it now seems to be uh, well Things have steadied out, just the thrum and the deck plates you associate with the warp engines being active. Uh, going, we'll start with Sharp and then I'll ask for Ramora to give us an insight, but just outwardly, how would you say that your respective uh, demeanors are? Uh, Sharp, start with you. Um, there was certainly a lot of determination um and like but, but like just as we're getting to the transporter there's a lot of determination and um attempt at empathy uh and now after hearing that and 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 feeling the the warp drive go with my anger there's just while I had seen Ramara look, you know, heartbroken. I, I don't have that expression. My face just drops into a frown. My eyebrows are knitted um, as I am. <sighs> Seems more of like a cold anger than anything else. Um, and a lot more different kind of energy. Um, fierce strong uh retributive i guess in, in that sort of silent silent anger silent smoldering anger sort of way um trying to keep it contained um and doing so for the most part um she looks at her now bro i imagine broken helmet um and the uh, mess of the of her hand from the from probably all the sharp bits in that helmet as she broke it. Um, I, I'm going to say uh, the but, fa I'm going to say the faceplate is a little bit cracked at the angle that you got it, but it's not completely uh -huh. shattered. Um, such okay. that your hand feels any pain, it is more from the fact that you did try to punch something very hard, even cushioned through the helmet. So it's probably more okay. the wrist. So, 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 so my so my fingertips are a little red from the bruising, but otherwise, yeah. Um, she just looks looks at the cracked face plate in her helmet, and then just drops it as if it's pointless. <laughs> oh. Um. And it looks over to uh, Remora. What is Remora's uh, pr outward state seeming? At first, uh, you you could really tell that he is very 
traumatized. He's shaking. His face is full of just surprise, distraught. Not very long after, though, it is replaced with seething, seething anger. It's it's a case of uh, Hulk like. Uh, raging fire, Thor like uh, smoldering fire with uh, Remora and Sharp in respective roles. Would that be fair? Something akin to it, I guess. Yeah. Um, she'll just look to um, she'll look to Remora. Ensign, I need you to focus. Focus. Look at me. Does she? Does he? No, he is. He at this point he is like grasping his hands, opening them and closing them, pacing back and forth. He's focusing, just more focusing on being calm. Yeah. She will. the 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 moment he gets cl- like paces back in the direction of of her, she grabs his shoulder very firmly with a with a strength that is not common for someone who is five five, um, and just turns her shoulder to fit for you to face her, ensign. Look to me. He looks to you with tears in his eyes. He just says, That was their home, Captain. Their home. I, we can grieve about it later. The ship needs us. The ship wouldn't leave in such a manner unless something terrible happened. Can you function to your station? Captain, I need a moment. If you could just give me a moment. And then I can go back to my station. I just... I need to calm down. You have ten seconds, Enzin. And then I need you back here to me. Right here. He nods. Thinks about it for a moment. Ten seconds is a lot of time, and he's going to do the same thing that you did. He's going to take his helmet and slam it into something a lot, and then throw it. Your ten seconds are over. Yeah, your ten seconds are over, Ensign. Back to work. Your crew needs you. It's Captain. You can grieve on your off time. In the current moment, the ship does not have that time. Do you understand? Yeah. I didn't hear you, Ensign. <laughs> yes, Captain. Good. To your station. Wherever that may be at the current moment. We'll get to the bridge. And if you are not needing the bridge, I want your engineering helping out uh, what you can for repairs. Do you understand? Is Chief Justice on the bridge still, Captain? What was that? Is Chief Justice still on the bridge? We will see right now. And if you're not needed on the bridge, what are you going to do, Ensign? I go straight to engineering. And? Assist with whatever they need. She nods. And then just doesn't even wait for you. She just starts calmly, coldly walking to the uh, trouble lift. The walk to the turbo lift, Captain, is a. Uh, it's, a uh, it's a slightly difficult one. Uh, the. Damage uh, the further that you uh, 
the further that you go from the transporter alcove, there's much more apparent about the situation. The, the turbo lift is uh, the turbo lift that would take you to the bridge is relatively central in the ship, but I am imagining that it is slightly forward in the hull or further to the further to the bow of the Aegis and it is a uh, like the closer that you get to that the more that you get the sense of a pretty serious set of blowouts and uh, signs of pretty significant damage uh, there are indeed at this point uh, members of the crew that are being helped by medical teams and by some other officers who might have been off shift uh, the, I offer cursory um, physical assistance where I can, but my directive and my uh, mindset is toward the bridge because yep. that's one that's where I'm best used. And I if need be if need be I will leave Ramor sorry cheesy but I will leave Ramor behind if there's more uh, physical labor that's needed. It's it's not so bad up here as to keep you from. Um, keep you from being, uh, both of you from being able to go up, but it does uh, it does at least slow you down a little bit. By the time you make it through the turbo lift and back up to the bridge, uh, you see that there appears to be a pretty significant uh, blowout from a panel immediately beneath the floor, uh, where of all things, uh, Marcus appears to be not quite sitting on the chair, but leaning forward on the captain's chair. Uh, as you pass the threshold of the turbo lift, you see that Shira is up by the engineering console with Xantar present. Uh, Xantar appears to be applying uh, some medical equipment to a bloodied segment of her uniform passing along her uh, right side, like along the hip. Um, on the way, uh, in the tri uh, the turbo lift and on the way up, uh, Sharp was uh, silent, uh, flexing and unflexing her uh, fingers into fists and relaxing them over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, when she steps out, she takes like a half, barely a moment to scan the scene before saying, damage report. As you are being treated, Shira, uh, Crichton is going to jump in on this first, I will say. Uh, considerable damage, Captain. The, uh, those last hits uh, depolarized the hull plating, and we are presently working to restore that. Um, targeting sensors were uh, momentarily knocked out, but they have been restored. There are fires on multiple decks and elevated radiation readings, uh, particularly on decks 3 and 11. Uh, Casualties. Decontam decontam uh, dozens reported wounded. Sick Bay is uh, still trying to get a handle on the situation. No fatalities at present. Uh, she looks over the direction of the uh, con. Um, is... <laughs> Uh, is Justice still working fine? Justice is Justice is still there, cool as ever. Uh, you you can imagine the way that he has tilted forward and intent on his controls. Uh, the the only thing shy of this being like a very gritty scene for him would be unzipping his jacket, maybe giving him something darker, and for good measure, a, <laughs> a cigarette or something. Um, sure. Um, she'll to, just say, uh, uh, he, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, he will actually say we're approaching system edge. Um, I, uh, do you want me to neutralize warp factor captain? No, keep going. Get us out of the system. Keep us at a sta uh, steady rate as fast as we can without redlining the engine. I right, sir. He says, uh, Maintaining the throttle and holding eh, holding his course away from Leistergon. Uh, let's bring see. Bring us to warp. Bring us. Bring us to uh, warp three point five if you can. Uh, I, 
think that you were already in. Uh, well, micro. I, I don't know how fast the micro jump was, so I thought it was like a warp one micro jump. I don't know. Yeah, but I'll I'll tell you what. We'll we'll get some rolls going here. I will roll for justice here. Uh, this will momentarily uh, take some ship power to increase. To, we'll say two points of power to increase to warp uh, up to uh, warp three, and then or three five. Uh, let's see, where did I put Justice? Of course, he's in the supporting characters. Um, I'll, I'll give Justice a quick roll if somebody would like to grab, um, Engines and Khan. I've got it up, I can do it. Okay. So, I'll give that a quick go here. Well, he scored one success. That is enough since you are not presently under fire, nor are you suffering any uh, increase in difficulty at present. Uh, so he is able to increase speed. Uh, while this is going on, uh, concurrently, uh, Xantar, you are finishing patching up Shira here. Uh, so the like, you can exchange a few words, of course, but when you are ready, I will ask you for a control plus medicine roll. Uh, if you have any sort of emergency medicine, triage, or anything of that sort uh, that you think would apply to patching somebody up uh, that might have suffered, like, a laceration or other traumatic injury, that would be appropriate here. Uh, I have a trauma. That should as a focus, not just in general, as a focus. <laughs> <laughs> I should say. Well, I guess I'll take that. Cool. I am going to roll challenge dice for the Aegis just to see whether you gain any effects and regain a point of power. That's not what I meant to do. Apologies. Uh no no no, we can keep that, that's fine. Okay, no no power is restored for on your roll there. Uh for, by the ship's advanced uh, warp drive, or improved warp drive, that is. Just as as uh, Xantar is like patching up Shira, just you know, for once, I would like to approach somewhere and not get shot at. Or, uh, or patch you up, Shira. You seem to be doing. I seem to be doing that a lot with you lately. Oh, blame the Kazinti. Good idea. Sorry, stressful day. Uh, all right. Oh, by the way, when I, so this is going to hurt a lot. When I get to the count of three, get ready to clinch. One, two, and I do it already just to stop you from like clinching. Like, <laughs> bastard! <laughs> Sorry, I needed you. To, I needed. I needed to do that. Oh, did you? Oh. Do I still have my commander? She says, looking toward the doctor. Uh, good question. Uh, let's roll and find out. Yep. Uh, Control. <laughs> I, uh, well, at a difficulty one roll, Xantar, your two successes are enough to succeed and to give you an additional point of momentum. Yay! Yay. I didn't kill Shira! Yep. Huzzah! She wasn't lethally injured anyway, so you were saved. Uh, I will say, for those of you in chat, uh, it looks like we had a couple people join in after the start of the stream. Uh, for those that are, uh, for those of you, uh, you know, you may see you are accruing some channel points there. We call them Quatloos here. If you want to help or hinder our players in any way, then you can expend them in all sorts of fun ways. Uh, affecting their dice rolls, bestowing momentum or threat for, uh, player, uh, for uh, player or my usage, or even creating scene traits that may help or hinder them in different ways. Uh, for those of you in the archive, this is obviously something where you'd have to join us live Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, that's 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Shameless plug. Anyway. All right, Star Trek has adverts in the middle of it, so that's fine. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, with that, uh, with a little bit of shrapnel extracted from the wound, you're certain the rest of it had passed cleanly through based on uh, your initial assessment, Santar. Uh, I don't you... suppose you want a souvenir, Commander. I'd rather not. Hmm. Good idea. So, setting that aside in a biohazard, um, 
bag and finishing patching up. Oh, uh, you can finally get Good. to them. Go ahead. Good thing these uniforms are blue. Covers up the blood. Yes, quite convenient. Commander, uh, are you fit to station? I can sit down. Great. I could use you right now. Thanks. She's in no immediate. She, you are in no immediate danger, Commander. You may carry on. Here. Doctor, I am sure you have much work elsewhere. Thank you. Absolutely. No worries, Horn's Dad. looking a bit woozy, I think. Oh, I'm, I'm... I will get to him immediately. I'm fine, he says, as he leaves the support of the chair and almost immediately falls over. Ah. I catch him. He's very woozy. Doctor. Yes, sir. Come along, Horn. Let's have a look. Rem uh, oh, Ensign, oh. Help, help Horn to to the uh, medical bay, and then, as we've already instructed. I Captain. Yeah. On on the way to the turbo lift, uh, Xantar Remora Horn starts saying, uh, "I really need to speak with the engineering department to see about getting a chair." I think that. May I think that may have to wait. And maybe some seatbelts. We'll, we'll see. That would not be a bad idea. Oh, yeah. okay, uh, I never did that throughout the entire of the Federation. They always ignored seatbelts. She she starts like moving toward the chair, notices the hole that is right there, right where she would need to sit. Um, like Put her feet in order to sit. She just puts a hand on top of the chair instead and uh, firmly just looks looks about her crew, looks towards Melnick. Melnick, with our sensors back, do we have any tagalongs? No signs of uh, Kizinti pursuit. Oh, if they if they decide to start pulling that silent running nonsense, then uh, it's going to be a difficult time seeing. She trails off for a moment, Captain. I might have some science magic I can work. Uh, can I get relief here while I work in the lab and try to formulate something? Have Stuart replace you. So just get up and run towards the turbo lift, um, hitting the wall calm on the way out and saying, Stuart, get your ass up here. Uh, y yes, sir. Yep. So uh, This will... Uh, at some point, to reflect things properly changing, Steward will be at her post. Good ensign that she yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, it is not very hard, uh, Shira, that uh, the comfy, sort of sociable captain is currently not there. And instead, you see more of that captain that you saw um, on the uh, Tholian worshipping planet. Okay. With a lot more anger that she's keeping very tightly in. Very well control, but just definitely a lot more angry. Uh, she says, She looks over at Crichton. I need a full report, casualties, damage, whatever. Um, whatever messages you got in the communications, decrypt further on their communication protocols. Uh, Steward, I need you to uh, keep frequent monitors of all sensors and all spectrums, especially regarding the uh, any further size we can regarding the uh, mere, mere sensor uh, blips when we do detect them. Uh, from their stealth mode and justice if you can give a more erratic course for the moment and I need you to the uh, need you to on occasion make brief stops with Shira I need you to start dropping a few of those mines limpet mines just for a nice little surprise if the uh, Kazinti do start trying to sniff our trail yes sir Might want to might wanna hold those in reserve, Captain, until we actually know they're chasing us. If they, uh, Chances are they're going to see our uh, warp field from light years away. 
Mm. Good point. Belay that then. She looks over to Shira. Any other concerns at the moment? She scans <laughs> scans the bridge crew. I think that the concern is, is where we're going. She thinks about it for a moment. I'll let you know in, in an hour. I want those reports, Creighton. We'll we'll do, sir. I'll I'll have that together as quickly as I can. And for the remainder of the bridge officers, uh, sure I could uh, do as uh, however you say here, Craig. Uh, but the rest of them very much ha give the air of we nearly died. We are trying actively not to die. We are going to bury ourselves in our work so that we do yeah. not die. Good choice. The captain's just silent and letting him do their work. Uh, oh. yeah, but but she does but she does say after like a long moment and she says, "Bridge." I'm glad to see all of you are safe and sound. You've done a good work. Thank you. Keep it up. We still have a lot to go. Hmm. And, uh, she tries to give a smile. <laughs> yep. It, it might not be the most reassuring at the moment. Uh, the Crichton yeah. does say, "Oh, uh, also, sir, I'll, I'll have somebody up to patch that hole when." when they get it, when we have a handle on the situation. Deal with the other major fires and the rest of the ship. I can spare not sitting on a chair for a little while. Uh, let's see. That being said, uh, Captain, are you sticking around up uh, on the bridge for the time being, or are you... Um, for a few minutes to make sure no, there's no other things of, of importance, I will let in, uh, call engineering to see how they're doing, what they need. Um, but otherwise, after a couple minutes, I will just go into my ready room and try to work down some of the, um, frustration and anger I'm feeling. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh. Not, which, which doesn't include punching things. I'm just probably just sitting and trying to just slowly, slowly calm down. Fair enough. So, how things will go from this point on? We we have a choice. Uh, we have options for what we can do scene wise. Um, uh, we can either, if if any of the rest of you would like to have a scene doing something, um, I think this is a good scene for Shira and the captain, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the options, um, Shira. If you wanted to. Uh, if you if we wanted to time skip ahead a little bit, say a couple hours after, uh, during which time you are certain the Kasinti are not yet chasing you, um, or there's no imminent threat, uh, then you could join her in the ready room. Um, otherwise, I I could throw. Uh, I do have one other at least small scene if Ramora it will feel like he's together enough to go down to engine room after all. Um, and also, I want to, of course, make the allowance if anybody has anything else that they want to do, then I want to give everyone the opportunity. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to get to engineering. I was on my way when this was all going down. <clears throat> yeah. We, we could take uh, a. Go ahead. Craig, would you like that scene right now? I, I, it, can, it, can, it can wait. Oh. Okay. So Shetra is probably judging it for when the captain's in a slightly better mood. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Now, we'll say that uh, we'll say that we're dealing with some more immediate damage control, um, and like focus in a bit on Ramora here as uh, Ramora and Romanov as they uh, handle things, and maybe a third character with an R-related name. Uh, but let's let's get started down here. Um, let me move us to engineering. 
Okay, uh, we pick up in the in the engine room where, although the star drive did not take many hits, uh, Romanov, by the time you had gotten here, it was a it was a bit of a mess, uh, as the engineers are uh, reporting various spikes and uh, containment issues in the EPS grid. Uh, now that the ship has helped you escape, uh, main power is somewhat depleted uh, with the sudden warp maneuvers to escape the gravity well of the gas giant uh, where that you knew you were visiting. Um, Fernier at this point is coming around a corner and saying, uh, I think we've got the worst of the fires out, but uh, we've... It's going to take a lot of time, Commander, to make sure the EPS grid's uh, completely stable. I'll start working on that. He kind of rubs his forehead. Uh, the chief, who, in addition to being a competent engineer, has served as the ship's quartermaster, has... Uh, he is looking just progressively more tired. He has been in a bad way for some months at this point, but uh, it's become much more pronounced of late. A few more dark circles under his eyes. Uh, well, you good until the end of your shift. You can you can go rest if you need to. I'll handle uh, things from here. Don't think there's that much. Uh, don't think there's that much time for that, boss. Uh, okay. If you don't feel you can be on the line, then just let me know. I know you've you've done an incredible job of holding the line. <laughs> done my best, but uh, frankly, if anyone needs it more, he says, gesturing to you, and the fact that you are still largely uh, the the medical equivalent of being held together by duct tape following last month's right. shuttle crash. Um, well, Chief, uh, I can't thank you enough. You've done an incredible job. Yeah. So uh, just hang in there. Um, I'm gonna go hit those EPS uh, conduits. Remora, when I see Remora walk in, I'll go. You want to help me out? Yep. Remora, you've just made it into the engine room. Um, the the shell shock persists from what you have happened and I, uh, from what's happened, um, and I don't imagine that the the captain's orders might have exerted a direct presence, but whether you are still feeling intact from all of that is entirely up to you. What can I do to assist? I was thinking of asking, I was thinking of grabbing you, and we're going to start on the EPS conduits. Well, real good with mechanical stuff, but whatever heavy lifting you need, I'll take care of it. Okay, then just make yourself useful here, and I'll go hit the uh, EPS conduits. So, she's going to head over and start working on EPS, because we can't generate more power until we can handle the power. So, yeah, You can generate more power. Um, it is not a specific breach system, I will say, for mechanical purposes, uh, but it it is probably a good thing narratively to try and get a handle on more of them. Um, yeah, that's that's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'll worry about generating power. <clears throat> if your EPS conduit can't handle power, then generating it doesn't really do any you any good. You may burn out more systems. Yep. So if I'm going to concentrate on the really difficult task. Yeah. If you want to create a little bit of an advantage, then... Uh, or if you want to make it a roll, then that can be done. Um, I'd say... I can tell you what I think she'd do. First, she's just going to diagnose. Okay, which EPS conduits are going to have to be replaced soon? And focus on the ones that are working and see if I can reroute power around them and then to target destinations around the ship. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. I will let you create an advantage... So that'll be a difficulty to task. In this situation, okay. I will give you insight and engineering. And Makes sense. for the advantage that you will gain from that, 
I will let you, uh, on the next roll that you do at some point to regenerate power, I will Ooh. say that the the mapping of, like, effective uh, power nodes uh, in the EPS grid allows you to gain one bonus power on your roll. So instead of gaining Great. a base of one, you gain two, plus whatever you expend momentum to uh, recharge. I will... She will not say no to that. So uh, I have electroplasma power systems as a focus. And uh, so I'm going to use that. And if we have a momentum, well, I don't want to spend momentum. We may need it for other stuff. You could always give the GM threat. I am very low on that. Um, <laughs> God damn it. I want to keep you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Zach. I want to keep it. you hungry. I'm so uh, hungry. I, <laughs> I know. I know you are. And, and I love you, man, but. I'm going to keep you hungry. Oh, you shouldn't <laughs> have spent it all last week. Um, <laughs> walking out of medical and getting to engineering? Yeah. Uh, so, question um, to the group. Do you want me to spend a momentum on this roll? There's the potential I could gain more than one power. What's the difficulty? Two. Two. Yeah. Yeah, 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 go for it. Spend okay. momentum, make momentum, and make power. Okay, power. I'll Unlimited try. Unlimited power. Well, this or six power. At. Six power. So, and 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 a note: this particular di design of ship is is very good at doing this, in her opinion. Okay, so here it goes. <laughs> that is one success and a complication. <laughs> All right. So use your termination to reroll that. You got, you got, you, and you've got bold, and you've got something like uh, what's it called, bold or cautious engineering. I have cautious there. engineering. Whenever you oh you, yeah, then you, can engineering, that. you buy you one or d twenty, okay. you may reroll yeah. a single d twenty. So I'm going <sighs> to do that. Reroll a d twenty. Yes, good, good, good idea. Okay, so this is only one die, no focus, because you don't get focuses on this, and uh, here oh, we go. I, I will grant a focus on this. I... Okay, I will not say no. <laughs> not that it, it would not it would not count on your first roll, since that was a 12 on the die, and mm -hmm. you would need, I think, a 5. Um... Okay, here we go. Ooh. Yay. Two successes, so that will gain you the advantage that you need. Uh, okay. If you would like, yeah, you I can restore that power now, or I could give the ship a trait that allows it to uh, gain a little bit more. Guys, or get, what do you want basically to gain power uh, here and now? I think presently you are down to three power. A, a trait would, sounds nice. Yeah, a trait does sound nice. If it's a good Let's trait, do the trait because okay. I can make more rolls. Because she's realistically now that she's diagnosed the problem and rerouted things, and she knows where the trouble areas now, she can start generating without blowing stuff out. All right. So the the ship trait that you have gained will allow you to uh, the next time that you run a power uh, restoration task. You will gain a base two. Oh, uh, well, you will gain two points of power instead of one. Mm, nice. So, while you are working on this, uh, Remora, uh, it, like Remora, you see Romanov setting to her task and just getting focused in with the work. You see, indeed, that everyone else is knee deep in. Uh, doing everything they can to keep the engine humming. And here and there, you might be asked to, like, move a bit of wall paneling aside or to lift something or temporarily hold a tool of some sort. It's basically, a few menial tasks in the engine room. But it is all extremely... It's all extremely mundane and brief work it is not something that occupies your mind, and it is not something that drowns out the thought of everything that you've just seen. 
that you know could be happening that just everything that haunts you here and it is uh, it it just it lingers there in your thoughts and it's something to where you almost don't hear the voice coming from right behind you until you feel a physical like hand on your shoulder there uh, would you just would you simply turn to react to it uh remora or would you uh like would the surprise uh, would that moment of surprise would you do anything different under that circumstance uh he knows he's safe on the ages but th he does do a little flinch because he was focused heavily on what he was doing trying to distract himself mm. so he'll tense up and then turn around to see who it is yep. and you know that you are still safe as Racco uh, grasps your shoulder uh, staring at you with his one uh, his one good eye uh, you know nine times out of ten Racco isn't going to hit you and that tenth time it's still a 50% chance on whether you're actually going to get hit hard or not uh, so you're in you figure you're in pretty good odds uh, with this situation. Uh, further help, he says. Hey, how are you holding up there? I am focused on my work. He, he looks around and says, yeah, this place needs it. And he'll get in a bit close. And you might need a little something else here. I, I've been saving it for a little while, but if you need it, I can get an alert to Kesh. Break out a bottle of, uh, uh break out a bottle of uh, Andorian ale I've been hiding this whole time. His more sadness demeanor takes on a more hostile look the only time that I'm going to drink is when those Kazinti learn a very, very hard lesson. Only then am I going to celebrate. They killed a Rocco. They killed almost all of them. And the rest are treating like cattle. My people, Rocco, Racco is going to go back and work on his stuff. Yeah. yeah. Racco is probably not feeling uh, terribly socially equipped. Uh, his easygoing smile, not the most fitting answer. And he can't really, uh, he can read the room well enough to know that uh, he should probably just start getting to work. Uh, but to his credit, uh, not immediately by you, uh, Remora. You will see that he is going and, uh, like, he's given a welding tool at some point and um, sparing tips among some of the engineering crew. And, uh, yeah, there's steady work to restore the ship. Uh, I think on that note, unless either Romanov or Ramora, if either of you would like to do something more, we can proceed from the scene. Uh but otherwise, all uh, otherwise you're all good. Yeah, <clears throat> she'd be pretty focused on her work. She kind of knows what's going on, but she doesn't need to know the full sit rap. All she needs to know is what the damage is and what she can do for it at the moment. Yeah, I'll I'll get you uh, just the the quick check on all of that so that uh, you you have everything in front of you here. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Cheesy, anything else you want to do with Remora right now? Uh, not, not at the moment. I will say if they have no longer need for his weightlifting capabilities, he can put those to use helping medical with any bodies that need to be moved. Yeah, that should be totally manageable. So, 
we'll we'll skip on ahead then as uh, as Aegis steadily pulls itself together and the hours extend uh, for a time with the ship continuing on at a at cruising along at fairly high speed relative to what it can do um, and a few more scars as uh, on areas of the ship where, um, co uh, like, the nuclear impacts have scored the hull a little bit more. Um, ship, and crew, um, ship and crew still hold out um, that there is, uh, there are other rumblings, other work to be done, and before I transition the scene, um, was somebody mm -hmm. asking for something? Uh, no. I, I I thought I was going to, but I don't remember what I was going to ask, so never well, mind. I, I was going to say, if uh, if you wanted that scene now, uh, Craig and... Uh, I'm down for Anna. it. Yeah, sure. All right. So, yeah. Uh, ship and crew are holding up and are keeping an open eye. Uh, eventually, the ship is reduced to a lower state of readiness, though it still remains on uh, effectively a condition yellow, with some crew still stuck at action stations. Uh, and while all of this all of this proceeds, Captain, you are running. You are left to rummage through paper charts as you try to fill in the blanks on uh, what. We are so far, of course. Like, yeah, trying to figure out where to go from here. Yep. Uh, at a at a moment here, the uh, whilst you are knee deep in uh, knee deep in these archaic charts and uh, guessing through the segments where uh, that are best described as here there be dragons. You are interrupted but in your train of thought. She just pauses a brief moment, gives a door an eye, and kind of lets it hang for a moment. If you want to buzz it again, Zach, because she'll just try to ignore it for one moment. Come in. Cheryl, come in. Yep, in walks your Andorian executive officer and armory officer. I've stepped down from uh, condition red, so everyone, so we can start rotating people off shift. That's a good idea. Probably Obviously. gonna have probably gonna have to include me at some point. She, like, finally looks away from the frickin' rags that she has of various charts. Also probably a good idea. You certainly have been working your best. No, I haven't been. Explain. I've just been thinking about that whole situation in the system. And honestly, I think I failed my duty there. Both as the executive officer and tactical officer. I mean, we could we could see the tactical situation. You know, there's three cruisers and a squadron of fighters. The situation calls for us to leave. I ignored my antenna, and because I, like you, I wanted to believe we could save those people. We want to be true should isn't necessarily the case, especially if that, especially when the evidence points against it. Lock the door. Cheryl will lock it. She takes a moment, slowly, smoothly, um, puts the paper down, which 
I think Cher has been an executive officer no long enough that it's it's science that she's still angry and she's basically just trying to be controlled um, in, in her responses. Um, and she just reclines on her chair. I have been running it through my head over and over for the past few hours, wondering if this is a tragedy due to myself due to the timeline being messed up or just an inevitable normal tragedy god help us i'm wondering if perhaps when the mission is done that those that colony can live again that never happened in the first place or was it meant to happen in some fashion or another? You're not the only one bothered by everything that's happened, Commander. Yeah, I know. But I also think that it's our duty, both as an Imperial Guard officer and as a member of Starfleet, that we had to try something, anything. We're an unsupported and damaged frigate. There's no friendly port within weeks of travel. I would love to have done something back there, but getting ourselves out of that system before we properly engaged the Kazinti was the sound tactical choice not go, not flying into that start not flying towards those cruisers into the range of their missiles whether so it was sense. the whether it was the tactical choice or the moral and honorable one is always something that's going to be lingering for you as cap as commander and captain i chose the latter and I paid, f and this crew paid for it for my decision. It wasn't but... just your. It wasn't just your decision. I, I was. I backed it. We did the right thing. We tried to do the right thing. Don't. She looks you very straight in the eyes, very cold eyes. But she's trying to be empathetic. But it's, it is definitely like just. These are the eyes of a predator. She just says in a very certain way, certain fashion, don't let your commands doubt you in your head. Once you make them, you commit to them. Heart and soul. I committed all right. Ah. Ah. Let others may... be the let others be the judge of your decisions afterwards. That's for the historians and everyone else. But we made a moral decision and it didn't play out in this current moment. But I think, I would hope that everybody would understand. Do you understand, Shira? I do. She'll look a bit uncertain for a, a moment and just lean against the wall. Did I just accidentally lean against the button? <laughs> <laughs> the, the intercom actually goes off and uh, Creighton's voice comes over. <clears throat> Bridge to, uh, bridge to Colonel Sharp. She slowly gets up, slowly, purposely gets up and uh, taps the uh, the comms button. Yes, Crichton. Um, Lieutenant Melnyuk wanted me to let you know that uh, she may have worked out a, a tactical advantage, or at least some 
some sort of development in the labs, and she can relay that up here to the bridge or conference room, depending on how you wanted to dispense the information. I just wanted to know, uh, how would you like for me to get the senior officers together? Have them all within the comments room in five minutes. Hey, sir. She lets go of the button and looks over to um, Shira. As captain, as commanding officer, whether we doubt our own decisions or not is no longer our, uh, is longer our position to make. Once we commit to them, we commit to them. And we must pay for it through our own scars and through our own pride. The moment you doubt it, whether before or afterwards, is the moment that you endanger the crew. Do you understand? I do. It has gotten me thinking about your situation, though. Oh? I know you're not willing or perhaps able to tell us exactly where you're taking us or what we can expect once we're there. And I know it's your claim that it's for our own good that we remain ignorant. But out here, what we don't know could get us killed. And if we can't make preparations, it's going to leave us vulnerable. I know. The closer we get to it, the more I can tell. We're almost there. I can certainly tell you that. But. She pauses. I am not hiding it in the fear, uh, in the concern about necessarily of things going wrong with that mission, but more of your own safety, especially you, Eula. We have enemies of unknown capacity, some of which suggest psionics, and I don't want to put you in that position. <laughs> this timeline of yours, if it came to it, what are you willing to sacrifice to have make sure it happens. <laughs> Your life? If need be. I've done it many times before already. She'll look a bit quizzical at that statement. You want some little bit of honesty here? Sure. Hoping for a lot of honesty, yes. Just because the his just because the future is better doesn't mean that it, it doesn't need to be defended. And just because the his just because the future is better doesn't mean there won't be wars or uh misguided thoughts or ambitions of other people. And I have, before I became stuck here in my own timeline, I committed myself to defending that noble future, that noble 
place, much like you. I sacrificed everything for it. I lost friends. I've ruined a marriage, my own relationship with my daughter. All to ensure that everyone else can live happier. And now, for the last two years, even with the likelihood of them being gone and all of that work being turned to dust, I find myself doing the exact same job I did before. I'm here to protect you and the crew and this quadrant in the hopes that you can enjoy a better future. One that someone is getting in the way of that. One who has already committed terrible things. And I couldn't do anything. And I'm not going to blame myself in thinking that I could. But I know that I can put a step in the right direction with this journey. And I can only hope, given our, that is a dog. That, that is very much a dog. <laughs> um, I can only hope with the experience you've had around me, that you can trust me. You can have confidence in me. That we'll get the job done. And everyone will be safe whether that is this crew or the quadrant. What if it requires sacrifice in this ship? Isn't that the decision of most captains in serious situations? Two hundred lives for whatever the future holds. I just gambled this life for a couple handful of Sulban in the hope of making sure the Sulban were better. I think we can save them. And that was my cross to bear, as it were. I know that analogy is hard for you to understand, but it is my sin to bear. But once you have a ship, you will be put in the same position. Whether it's this ship or another one. Just with a small smile. Hmm. What can you live with? She points... She points to your chest, like at, at your heart. You can ensure the safety of your crew and damn your soul. Always thinking back on what you could do. Or you could try to live honorably and make much risk. It's never going to, it's not always going to go the way you think. More often than not, it won't. But I think you and I both would sleep a lot better making those risks. When they arise. I won't pretend to know about the future or I don't timelines or time travel and all that nonsense. I would be concerned if you did. <laughs> she says with a small smile. Because I certainly don't. I, d I do know the ship and crew do need someone who has their present and their futures in mind. I suspect I probably failed today in that. 
I'm not going to fail in. I'm not going to fail in that duty again. Be a sound mind for me. Be the con contrarian when you can. But you did everything you could. Eula. You did the right thing. They're yeah, probably expecting us in the conference room. Can I insight, Shira? Absolutely can, of course. Well, this would be Shira's... Uh, this would be, rather, Sharp's insight plus command versus Shira's uh, insight and presence. Or rather, command and presence, command. depending upon whether... Um, or I suppose control is also appropriate. I will give you the choice there, Craig. Um, and that is if you are contesting or trying to hold anything from her. So, okay, Zach, so you know Sharp's slash Greystoke's issue, but she does know outwardly how to discern things. Would I get diplomacy or gamble with that, or would you say no, given the circumstances? I think I'm going to rule that it doesn't quite apply here. Okay. <laughs> okay, one success from Sharp. Uh, Shira, Yay. are you contesting? That's another 19. Good God. I won't contest. Okay, so then you technically succeed. No momentum, but still... Yeah. Um, uh, any anything that uh, you are expressly looking for, uh, Panda? Just is my pep talk working? Because this is from a captain. This is a very experienced captain to a, a new commander, uh, and trying to explain, like, dude, like, yes, we jeopardize the crew. The crew are paramount to survive. You know, we want to care about the crew, but. Like, there is duty, there is honor, and there is doing the right thing, trying to do the right thing, even though it might cost people, you know? Whether it's yourself or the crew, but you have to make that decision. And it wasn't a wrong decision to make in that moment. It just didn't turn out well. It just, it just, just we, we called heads, it came out tells, and that's it. I think what uh, Sharp picks up is that this is perhaps more sh about Shearer having vented her thoughts at this point. Yeah. It, she understands where Sharp's coming from, but is. Uh, it still sucks. Yes. Yeah. She'll... It comes off a slight awkward, I will admit. Um, but God damn it, dog. <laughs> um, it'll come off slight off awkward. Freaking Jasper. Um, but she'll just sort of put a hand and give you a, a, a hand on your shoulder and give it a very soft squeeze. We're both tired. We'll get this meeting done. And you can step away from your duties. Get some rest. Cry if you need to. There's no harm in crying when you're alone. Alright. Oh, believe me, I've got no problems with that. Well, let's get to this meeting. Yeah. She'll set her stuff down and Follow to the meeting room. Yep. With that, uh, with that discussion in tow, and with some thoughts cleared, uh, with your thoughts cleared out, um, the the officers uh, all file their way down um, 
I will say, as we get to the conference room, um, Horn is absent from this. Lambeth has, as usual, opted to send Xantar. Sorry, I think Xantar at this point, he's just, he's perfectly happy to let you take over the bit of uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. what he considers tedium. Especially as we're getting closer to the end of this journey, um, I am hounding Lambeth of getting our, ba our, our secret project done, so yeah. He has more important things to do. Yep. So we arrive in the uh, we arrive in the briefing room. Um, Melnyuk is setting up something, uh, getting something downloaded. Uh, do you want to run a? Do you want uh, Melnyuk to uh, show off her uh, the advantage that she has uh, cultivated? Yes. Or... Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. We we can do show that. Your for... magic. Show your magic. We can do that first and uh, show you where the effects budget went to this week. Um, <laughs> and then, show off Al. Yes. Uh, then after that, we can... Um, what is it? Uh, what happened here? Sorry, just something broke down a little bit, and... All right. Very good. Uh, so, well, she'll do her bit, and then we can do status updates. I have relayed some information to each and every one of you. And... Let's see, okay, that one's wrong layer... Let's see if this one works. Um, nope. Where did you send that info? I have DM'd you guys each on Discord. I have not received anything. I guess I um, captain this the, blind. The captain would be uh, getting updates from people. Sure, uh, sure. I'll I'll remind you of one question to ask here in a moment. Um, yeah. All right. So. Melnuk goes to uh, Melnuk uh, goes to the nearby wall computer um, as each of you settle in. Um, so, so we know a little bit of the uh, we've learned a little bit of the Kazinti with these repeated encounters, um, as the encounters from the previous year when you saved that Tellarite freighter and. When we saw them at the uh, binary system, when the fighter showed up around the uh, the derelict, uh, at that planetoid with the derelicts around them, and uh, with the gas giant, we've I've been able to steadily pick up some readings and uh, using using the uh, computer tool that your uh, Mister Saral had left behind, I've been able to figure out something rather interesting. Uh, while the the combination of the ship's reflective plating uh, would appear to be some sort of radiation baffle system, and the uh, configuration of their warp nacelles all seem designed to constrain their EM profile, uh, when the vessels are at warp, there is still some mild uh, gravitational uh, influence and interaction with subspace. It's very difficult to pick up, but the sensors are powerful enough uh, that we can still get a read on them. I, with the help of the generative tool, was able to plug this in, and, well, I got some results. And she will project a screen. Unfortunately, you're not going to like it. No. Sensor radius around the around the sector shows that there are at least a dozen cruisers uh, within several light years distance. Ha! Ah. That just to be clear, that's Craig making the noises, not Shearer. Yeah, that is that is that is Craig definitely doing his best. Hank Hill. Whoa! Uh, Shearer just. Ah. I mean, huh. Yep, yep. Uh, and it, it gets worse as I take this into a three-dimensional space where oh. they're not simply... Oh 
It seems like they're not simply stalking us to uh, surround us here, but uh, she shifts to a 3D display. They're laid oh out God, in... This... Two Aegises. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, sorry, sometimes sometimes the AI tool uh, hiccups a little bit. To clarify, the GM did not, in fact, use generative AI to make this. This was painstaking work over hours, and I make the occasional mistake here. Let's see. Okay, do our do I need to unmute? Zach is still working on becoming a hollow novelist, so still yeah. getting a hang of the controls. All right. Well, I I got rid of the wrong aegis, so let's <laughs> let's ungroup. Oh, wait, no, you're yeah. No, okay. that's the one from the mirror universe. Yes, yes. We Can we hang that that. around? <laughs> yeah. Don't 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 worry about it. Yeah. That's that's uh, Sharp's uh, actual ship from her universe. Oh God! All right. Okay. Uh, starting again. So when we switch to a 3D display, the it's pretty clear that the Kazinti are arrayed in such a manner as to uh, effectively they have uh, they have planes set up to where they could very nearly uh, cut us off on most of our approaches right now. If we try to stray too much in t uh, one direction or another, then chances are they would intercept us. There's, as near as I can tell, about only two effective escape courses. Of course there is. And that is. Well, and now there are two Aegises here <laughs> for some reason. Let me... Oh, oh my god, they're multiplying! <laughs> we just need about eight more and we're good. It's the, it's the hol holographic out. display. It must have been damaged in the nuclear explosions. Naturally. So, the nearest course... Uh, let's see. We could continue our rimward course and hopefully proceed that way. Hang on, I'm still running sensor scans there. There's at least a couple star systems. Uh, the nearest one seems to be exhibiting quite a few signs of uh, gravitational waves of some sort. Uh, let's see. The other course would... There is actually a means right now that we could... Uh, we could possibly make back for a friendly port... Uh, or at least in the general direction if we wanted to try and make a break back for Earth space. Um, the Kazinti haven't uh, closed an important gap here. Uh, their vessels are arrayed that we in such a manner that we could, uh, if we are able to make high warp, then we could make it back there. Even if we don't make it to Earth by the time they try to catch up, we could probably... Uh, be able to make to Beta Z or find another friendly port. I, I know that there were some sensors suggesting activity around places like Miniar or other places on the navigational charts. Places that we maybe could have stopped earlier. We do need to put into a port at some point. The captain's like practically burning a hole at, at that three at the three uh, D star map. Like captain, please, your stairs can only go through so far. You're breaking the ship. <laughs> How quickly can the uh, can Kazinti close the net if they wished, if they wanted to? Hmm. Well, if they if they notice on that uh, that opening on the aft course, then. It could be a matter of, I would guess, at least a matter of a, a day or so. Uh, but we would theoretically have enough time to uh, to break out of the net if they um, if they tried to close rings during that time. But we would have to make that decision soon. And again, that depends on whether they've even noticed. Uh, How soon? Worst case scenario, uh, the models that I developed saw 
36 hours, maybe? If we continue on our present heading in this uh, northward direction, which for the 3D map is, like, this way. Uh, if we continue out heading towards the Galactic Rim, then there's no sign necessarily that they would be able to close the distance uh, right away. Or close the, uh, close the gap there. I Honestly, it, it does seem like... A, it, it seems odd that they would leave so much open there. Shira, do you think that's a trap? This is intentional? It could be attempting to hurt us. <clears throat> I mean, that's... You know, maybe they've created a hunting kite. You know, when they want to get us and they want to leave an opening so they can mm. just close it around us. Um... Could we, GM, could we do some of these repairs out there, you know, in the void? Void. In the great unknown. The great unknown. Um, so the key issue, Romanov, with conducting a lot of those repairs would be having a degree of uh, heavy equipment and being able to stay in a spot for a time. Uh, the Aegis does come with a complement of two worker bees that can affect some of the repairs you would need, say, to the uh, to the hull and whatnot. But that means finding a place where you are not at warp, and um, even then, mechanically speaking, that does not get rid of breaches that you have accrued. You you do properly need. Uh, like starbase type facilities in order to remedy that. Which means crossing space back to one of those friendly ports, you know, wounded. I think limping would be the best term. Yes, that would probably be the best term. Um, we might be able to employ our probes as decoys, ma'am. Uh, you know that's that's a possibility. I really leave that in. That's that's sheer as turf. Uh, I can it might monitor. it might give us a few extra hours. We could have them. Uh, my suggestion would be to have them on standby, so that if we needed to convince them that they were somewhere else. But Stuart, have you modeled like us getting yeah, out? Stuart, Melnick, Melnick. Melnick, have you modeled us getting out of here? How fast they can close the distance based on known capacities? Well, depending upon, uh, uh, like I said, if we if we try to backtrack, we could uh, we could have like thirty six hours before they close that uh, close that off. If their speed is comparable to ours, then. In the worst case scenario, if they see us, then they could probably hold pursuit for a while. Uh, if they're faster, and I don't know Kazenti vessels well enough to say for certain, we we might have to deal with a skirmish or two. Um, I I'm, I didn't have every scenario completely modeled out. I just. As soon as I saw what we were looking at, I thought that this was urgent enough to bring oh. to you. Um, we're, in a, we're in a pretty sparse area of space, so I think that our best bet is to keep running. And if you don't mind me saying, Captain, I do think running back is probably the better idea. I, much as yeah. I would love to continue exploring. It's enough anyway. We haven't seen She, uh, GM... I know where it's at. Where's our true goal from, from where we are right now? Could we outrun them? Well, the if you try to backtrack, that will take you away from the, the Rimward course that you are on. Right? Well, I know. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about my goal personally. I know where that is, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Could we outrun them? Conceivably, but... You know that the the distance is still pretty considerable, and uh, 
that there's there is uh, that covering it over that amount of time might be it might be a problem he just might need to stop for other reasons the there's a lot of difficulties that could come up although you, you do remember something you feel like something's bothering you a conversation you might have had uh, that maybe hadn't made it to the charts um, but you happen to know um, that uh, you it I'm just going to say it strikes you you happen to remember that uh, you were having a conversation with Ramora about this segment of space and that he had brought up something else besides the uh, the base at Lystragon. She just looks over to um, to Ramora. Ensign, you mentioned something else while talking about uh, the colony on Lystragon. What was it? Uh, it was a subspace corridor. It's a rumor, but it's in the machine system. It's something. It's anchored. It's likely to take us rimward course, further away from any ports, but further along where we need to go. Roughly where... It, roughly how long would it take us to get there? Uh, would I know that, GM? Uh, I'm going to say, tell you what, give me a reason plus con roll, since this is something that you knew about, um, I will set it to, I'll set it to a difficulty one as far as at least knowing where the machine system is located. I get my ship's weapons focus, right? Uh, ship's weapons don't quite apply here. I'd say more of a helm-related task applies. <laughs> and that is three successes with a critical success. Very nicely done. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say that it's uh, probably about two days, hey, like at present speed, it's maybe a day and a half at uh, at uh, at current speed. And how far away are the other possible friendly ports going back home? Weeks? Oh, Crichton chimes in. Uh, there, there were other ports on the star charts that uh, we had we had steered around. Uh, most of them were back near the uh, Murasaki 312 anomaly. Uh, that, that would be weeks to months for some of those approaches. Although I, I did think there were rumors of a few others uh, that might be a little closer. Well, They're not safe, she says. All right. It does seem, it does seem our best bet to go with uh, this uh, place Remora knows about. Remora have ships traversed this thing before? I never have never any concrete proof that I know of but many captains have boasted that they have. Romanov, how long can the engines redline? How, how long can they redline? Yeah. I am... I'll tell you what, Brian. Uh, roll me. Uh, let me... Let me take a look. I'm pretty sure that this is just going to be a straight D20 as I go into the Utopia Planitia source book <laughs> for Star Trek Adventures and judge that based on uh, the pair time here. Uh, let me... Take a look at this. Yes, give me a single D20. If you should score between 18 and 20, I am going to... Uh, actually, tell you what. Um, 
If you give me anything over a 12, I will ask you to re-roll. Go. Okay, rolling now. Uh, more like uh, use the dice rolling option on d20 because got that's... Uh, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. That would be a 17 anyway if I were taking what the, the task sheet rolled. Hold on. Doing it now. Yeah. Better yet, you can just... Uh, Okay, at four. Hmm. Yeah, Romanov. Uh, this will flow in. Uh, this will flow in part to the information that you have from the uh, the damage control, particularly that first point. But right mm. now, uh, more than a couple hours would be pushing it. More than a couple hours, and I need to brief everybody on where we are. EPS is patched up like a Christmas tree with Santa coming down the chimney. Um, she has no it, idea anything of what that means. She'll about. just look over you. We're fucked, and it's ah. jury. It's practically jury rigged. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Kazinti. Um, weapons seem to be bad for our containment fields. Uh, we've sealed whole. Three, uh, we've sealed bulkheads. There's enough scrap and patch left to still fill the plug the holes. Uh, anti radiation cleanup is about at least another four hours. Here is the good news. As, uh, as Mr. Melnick knows, sensors are fully functional again. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand. I only understood part of that. Can you explain the rest in more Christmas metaphor? <laughs> A Christmas metaphor. No, Look, you all the elves and Santa are coming down the. Uh, you see, the captain's not not happy, not not in a good mood right now. <laughs> and and, and yeah. early happy holidays to come, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clipping. Hold on, this. message coming in from the captain. It says humbug. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's 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 the quit joking. Get back to get back talking. That's where we're at. EPS is barely patched up. We have to avoid bumps. That means complexities. Um, I, I, what do I think, GM, the repair time is on the EPS? Uh, give me another, this time, D20 roll, please. Okay. Slash roll. You can do slash, slash R instead of slash roll. Um, I got a 19, so you said re-roll those, right? No, no, no. This time I will accept it because I'm using the... Um, this time I'm using the full Utopia Planitia advanced rules on uh, downtime for repair systems. Okay. Check your Discord. Got it. 48 hours to repair. And that's with triple shifts, I imagine. All hands on deck, man. And we've got some engineers who are pretty burned out. From the look of my uh, sick bay, a few of them have burned up as well. Yes, there's injured. Obviously, I don't know the full status of the team. I went down, worked on EPS, crawled down there for medical, worked on EPS, crawled up here. Understood. Doctor, how are the casualties? Uh, honestly, it's not looking too bad. Like I said, no casualties. Crew are receiving some of the anti-radiation uh, medication that we have, for those who are caught in those levels. It's cutting into our stockpile, but more can be synthesized. I've already got some people working on that. Uh, Mr. Horn also would like to apologize for him not being able to be here, as uh, he is currently undergoing treatment for a concussion, and he will be unavailable for uh, uh, roughly a day or so. I see. She looks to um, Creighton. Any work on the communications? I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I have not been able to break through the Kazinti's communication protocol. Uh, the, uh, however they're encrypting their system or whatever they're 
uh, like I can make out a partial frequency that cheddar is occurring on, but uh, it's uh, it's proving exceptionally complicated. Can you disrupt it? I, I mean, I could attempt to uh, create a local signal jamming around some ships, uh, but it's not something I can have. Uh, I can't have it readied until we are in the area proper, and even then I can't vouch for how successful it will be. Depending on how well I do on my task, it would be between a difficulty one and three roll for them to coordinate. Understood. Because Inti might just start shooting at that point. Yeah, I have a question, Captain. You seem familiar with the Kazenti. Wouldn't they have already? Uh, wouldn't they have already have surrounded us, given their hunter mentality? Or what What are they waiting for if they know we're here? Given the amount of uh, deaths they have suffered already, they're already treating us as a greater threat. If anything, they are trying, if probably, coordinating while also easing their logistic problems, she says after a long moment with a dour look. Also, quick note, our, uh, while Mr. Horn regrets he is not able to join you today, uh, he does offer you a point of momentum with a quantity spend, and he has decreased the difficulty on your next roll. Hey, thank you. We, we miss you, Felix. Where the hell are you? <laughs> Why are you not in here? He's I'm behind you. Ah! <laughs> um, is, is that about uh, summing up, GM? Uh, sorry, refresh my memory. My, my brain was um, shorted out. More or less... Well, the reason why they aren't jumping at us completely is because we already did enough damage to them already, so now they're treating us as a much bigger threat and being more careful. While at the same time, they're dealing with their logistic problems, i.e. eating the local populace uh, and, you know, just, just taking, care, taking care of some, some logistic problems while also just being more careful about their hunt. I, I would say that's a fair proposition, and that actually... it You... You come to a grim realization, Captain. The the cruisers that were docked there might not simply have been uh, enjoying a, a most disturbing feast, but may have had the same issues that you were keeping their ships uh, properly fueled um, and might have just basically beat you to the watering hole, uh, as it were. Right. All that said, the, the sheer numbers of ships is not sustainable, she says. Now, unless they hit a big world, and even then, that's a risk. She looks at that. She looks at the chart. Well, I think, I think they are certainly already stressing a number of uh, fleet issues already. Hence the, wanna, hence the more complicated uh, tactics. I do want to raise one concern about Ramora's idea. We don't know what stress this mythological highway. Is that what we were describing? Subspace corridor. Subspace corridor could do to the Aegeus, given her uh, wounded state. She looks at Shira. Giving that captain look to the commander for an opinion. They've been on our tails for a while now. I think if we reverse course, we're only going to find more of them. If I were to guess, if, there's, if they've laid a trap for us, it'll be back the way we came. She just gives a slow nod, and there's a very hint, very, very tiny hint of a smile. Um, but it looks back to the crew. I agree with the commander. If anything, it'd be a lot more persuasive for the pride, uh, pride leader 
to talk their uh, entire pride into setting up an ambush closer to supplies rather than stretching their stretching their hunting grounds further and further, especially this far out from their territory. We're going to make a run for it. We're heading over to Subspace Corridor. Remora, I need you to uh, take Justice's place. No offense, Justice, but you've been on, on that seat for more than almost a day. You need your break. Um, it's okay, Captain. I'm not even in the uh, briefing room right now. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, like, yeah. The disembodied yeah, yeah. voice right. joins. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm, she's a, I'm on the bridge right now. I really need a break. Yeah. That. <laughs> She'll say, Ramora, I need you to take, uh, take Justice's place. He's been there for more than a day, almost a day, and certainly your best, your best is on the bridge uh, on, at a pilot seat. Head over in the direction towards the uh, mezzanine system and the subspace corridor. Crichton, I need you to make careful observations of any signals regarding the uh, the Gazinti or other powers that are a little nearby, but I want you to start sending very narrow band signals in the direction towards the, the station, uh, the subspace quarter, and see if there's any stations or anything we can use, civilizations or otherwise, either to warn them or to perhaps uh, give a temporary safe harbor. She looks over to Romanov. Romanov, Whichever crew member you need, I don't care from which department, I need this ship patched up as much as possible and reinforced. Yep. If we have if we have to dive into the subspace corridor the moment we get there, I need this ship ready. Do you understand? Got it. Yes. And it needs to hold together long enough to get to the other end. Once we're through the other end, we can deal with that problem. Got it. She looks over to Mjolnik. Lieutenant, you've done a great job. I certainly com uh, commemorate your work, but I need you to focus further on getting a better understanding of these uh, brief signals that you can, uh, or brief hiccups you can of seeing the Kazinti vessels, maybe get more details or a better latency and, and resolution on where they're moving and how. I want to find out I want you to send a half-hourly report and um, scan of the ships and their movement to Shira. Shira, I need you to start focusing on the movement of the ships and find me the pack and pride leaders amongst each of the group. Maybe we can see if there's any sort of disharmony or contention, even hesitation, given... Uh, the amount of effort they have made trying to find us. If we can perhaps, if we can perhaps slow down and knock knock a few heads to cause further chaos, that's what I want to try to do. Everyone understand their orders? Yes, Captain. Yes, yes Captain. Melnick rubs her forehead and says, well... The system I have currently isn't foolproof, but I'll see what I can do to improve our modeling. I'm also going to conduct a pre-approach scan, see if I can get a better sense of the system. Let me try to work out some of the, uh, the gravitational anomalies. I'll, I'll have a report as soon as I can, Captain. If you can find areas, whether nebula, radiation, or otherwise, that you think would be help, uh, perhaps make us disappear for an hour or two uh, on the way to the subspace corridor. That would be preferable. But at the moment, I want your concern towards find, or keeping an eye on those Kazinti vessels. Yep. She, she'll she just, uh, with your permission, Captain, she will leave as she has... Uh, oh, yeah. She'll just say, if there's nothing else, dismiss. Yeah. You she's, have your too, orders. she's too tired to explain to you that the... Um, that there's no chance the ship is, um, there's no chance that uh, you're going to run into a nebula out here anyway. You are in a pretty empty bit of space, but she'll just oh she'll sure work. yeah. But but she's just like if you can find even the tiniest bit, like sure. But your priority right now is keep an eye on those Gazenti vessels. Yeah, um, yeah. And she's uh, yeah. And so the captain says, if there's nothing else, dismissed. You have your orders. 
She looks over to Romora. Romora. Maxim, Maxim Warp, but don't redline it yet, just in case. Aye, right, Captain. Okay, so with that, the uh, uh, does I guess I'll check here. Does anybody else have things that they want to say before the meeting cuts out, or uh, other just anything else uh, um, whilst the crew is assembled? Um, if there's nobody else, the captain would approach the screen with the 3D grid on there. She'll just look at it hard and kind of mutter on her breath. I've gotten this far. Don't take it from me, please. I won't let it. I won't let you take it from me. She says with like almost a, a uh, an exhaling, exhaling growl and just clicks off the 3D image. Yeah. Yeah. Sharp growls futilely towards the GM. Yep. Yeah. Motherfucker. Out in the hallway. <laughs> oh, I'll stop Eula. Hmm. Oh, hey. Is there something going on I should know about? You know the concerns, Shira. Uh, come, come see me later. Fair enough. She'll uh, head back, uh, you know, to start organizing teams to work. Yeah. Romanov uh, limps her way out of the engineering corridor in an encounter, Shira, that I'm sure was uh, maybe for a moment caught you as a uh, as the Terrans would say, deer in the headlights. Mm. Sh- Shira, I guess, is going to have to limp the other way also with begging. <laughs> <laughs> no. the, the pain meds are doing well enough that, uh, that pain you, med day. Uh, you, aren't, uh, you aren't feeling that so much. Uh, that being more, said... More uh, pain meds. Uh, <laughs> looks like you uh, looks like you got a few more marks. It's uh, it's good. It adds character. Oh, a lot more pain meds. Uh, I've got plenty of character already. Thank you. Uh, I wouldn't dispute that. There. Uh, no, no. You you seem all uh, you seem all right uh, as a as a baseline Shira. Thank you for that. Such a wonderful compliment. Oh, yeah. anytime. I I give him uh, I give him out pretty freely. He says, and you're you're not sure whether he's just blinking more heavily or trying to wink. The the eye patch really throws things off. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I suppose it would. Yeah. Mm. Uh. That being. Uh, You've been going through a fair bit, though, so I, I don't want to trouble you too much, but I, I did have a query. Such fine consideration, thank you. Yes, yes. What's, what is your query, Mr. Rekko? Uh, what is the policy... Uh, uh, what is the specific policy of alcohol on board the ship? For for off-duty types, not not if you're working or anything. Glad you cl- clarified. Uh, you're allowed to drink, just... As long as you're sober enough to get on to duty again, if there's a uh, tactical situation. Mm -hmm. So don't get completely wasted. I see. Uh, I got a problem then, uh, Commander. Uh, See, I I have an exceptionally nice old vintage of uh, a 387... Uh, Lord Valenier uh, ale, and I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about uh, breaking into the thing, uh, all on my lonesome. Uh, Remora wasn't too keen on joining me for a drink with everything that's going on, and I, I heard. Um, well, I, I also heard that uh, 
Well, I tried to pass along to my friend Cash as well, but he's uh, he's not too keen on it himself either. And more, he's he's had some bad experiences. Uh, uh, more and I might have uh, uh, had a little bit of artistic fun in the past. It's a whole issue. Uh, point is, one a bottle that nice, that strong, a bit too much for me on my own. I I know my limits. Uh, between two Andorians, we might be able to handle it. So, uh, you know, when you're well, off duty. I'm sure the twins would absolutely appreciate that. <sighs> yeah, I, I suppose. Of course, uh, you're welcome to join, I'm sure. Off duty. I gotta check everybody's duty schedule and... It's not easy when you're not properly on duty yourself, or not part of the schedule. And I'm, you know, oh, you you want to be part of the schedule? Oh, not particularly. Well. No, uh, I, can, I can make arrangements. I can make. Or are you in short schedule. supply right now? <laughs> you know, hey, uh, hey, hey, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure engineering is short a few hands and does need some help. So if you'd like to report down there, hey, I'll, uh, I'll volunteer good. here and there, but I'm I'm not putting on that uniform. I. Frankly, I'm yeah. The way I heard it, uh, I'm a little surprised a, a go uh, anyone from the guard put it on. Not that I particularly care about the guard; they can, uh, they kind of can. work themselves in their own little jatan. Huh. <sighs> go to engineering. Yeah. Anyway, so Shikaris might be down there. Yeah, yeah. She might, she might appreciate it. Yeah. Suit yourself. Uh, can only try to be so sociable, I suppose. Thank you for trying to be sociable. He, uh, he kind of gives you. Uh, he turns back as he's walking away. Gives you a glance, then looks back towards uh, the direction Romanov was walking, then back to you, then back and forth for a few moments, and just kind of gives us his carefree smile over the shoulder before he turns and walks away. So. I am going to need a treat, but... <laughs> <laughs> you can take it with the captain, who will not fight with you. <laughs> So, some some time continues, uh, and uh, Ramora the the hours elapse, and you you spend a fair bit of time volunteering, um, before uh, with like just about to the point where you start to realize that your um, you start to realize that after so much. Uh, after holding so many things, after helping so many people around, you, honestly, you run out of tasks before you are willing to admit that exhaustion might be sapping at your bones a little bit. Um, I think that, well, actually, I think back to this, uh, you've eventually come up for relief to, uh, you were ordered actually to relieve the captain, so I'll, uh, not the captain, um, you're ordered to relieve uh, Chief Justice, if memory serves. Now, yeah. So, so let's let's reorient uh, tokens just a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put you back on the bridge. Uh, who would like the Who would like the big chair, or at least nominally? I'll take the, the big chair because Shira has been running around the clock, and. Uh, I'll take some of that workload. So the uh, people can be all sharp when we need to be. Yeah, yeah, sharp. Hey, yeah I got that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just set some things about here. So, uh, Ramora, I I'm going to modify the earlier monologue. Um, you have been volunteering quite a bit throughout the day, to almost to the point of running out of tasks to do when the captain called you in. Uh, your move instead to relieve the uh, relieve Chief Justice 
has been helpful as well, because this is work that you could get into where you could steady out the... Uh, or you could help to steady out the ship a little bit more uh, and just keep things functioning as smoothly as possible. Let's move to the bridge set here. Uh, at, at this point, uh, an engineer is finishing up some patching work on the on the bit of plating uh, they've they had in the time that you were uh, gone removed the damaged portions of the uh, of the flooring and have replaced it with uh, something more intact they're in the process of getting things properly screwed down as we speak um, yeah it's the situation falls into a relatively simple rhythm as uh, Melnick continues her scans on pre-approach. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to ask somebody to roll the ship for sensors plus science. Uh, she's going to have a difficulty three roll, which is reduced to difficulty in two by the ship's advanced sensors. I'll, I'll take that first roll since I, I held it down, so that's two successes. So this will automatically be some momentum. We'll, uh, we'll touch on results here in a moment. Anybody able to get the ship? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll roll the ship. What, what do we want to roll here? Uh, sensors plus science, plus please. Sensors plus science. Science, 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 science. Uh, one success. Nice. Okay, so that will grant you one additional point of momentum. Good, fill up the pool. Fill up the pool. All right. Uh, so let's see, Romora. How is how is your state of mind? tending to the helm at this point. He's trying to make it as blank as possible. He's focusing on every single thing to do with piloting. He's looking at every single thing on the ship's systems. He's making sure everything's flying right. He's making sure that the warp is, is okay. He's making sure that he's keeping the ship steady. He's monitoring everything down to like the sixth decimal to try and stay focused on something else. Yep. Uh, so, can I uh, for uh, well, you, uh, uh, um, can I make a brief scene with Mora? Huh? You... Or would I have a time? We should have we should have time to do that. Um, Melnook will have an update here, and uh, well, a thing will happen when you guys are ready to call it on Sensei. Okay. All right. Uh, she'll notice uh, after like a good hour. Um, she frequently eyes your back, and you can feel it, <laughs> Remora. I'm, I imagine Remora is pretty sharp, so. Uh, yeah, uh, your your cabin definitely like eyes your back several times before. Says Anson. I come. Follow me to the red room. She just gets up and goes to the red room. Yep. She'll just look over. Um, boo, boo, boo. Who is on the bridge? She'll say, uh, Melnick, you'll have the bridge for the moment. She, she kind of looks around. No, Alvarez, get the... No, you don't, Alvarez. Sit the fuck <laughs> down. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Alvarez just sits down. Alvarez goes I just, full... I, like... I, just, I just see Alvarez like starting to kind of get back up, and Melnick just like pushes his face away. Like, no. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back to the later Follow. Uh, she she opens the door, but she gestures you to go first. 
He nods and walks in. She follows and closes the door. And waits. Well, need, Captain. you tell me. There seems to be a problem. No, Captain. I'm just staying occupied. The way your shoulders are hunched up, the way that you have required on occasion a double check when it comes to uh, coordinates or other statements, the way your, your vision seems to drift here and there, it seems like you have something else on your mind. There's a lot on my mind, Captain. But I I'm understand. To keep it down. But you understand that it is compromising my ship and turning you into a very distracted officer. I have no therapists or counselors on this ship, Ensign. But I'm giving you the luxury right now to talk. To me. While there are certainly your friends who would probably understand, probably even more than I do, I have run in similar crowds to you have, and I can emphasize a little more with you, or I try to at the very least. I think we can sympathize together. So out with it. She folds her arms. You already know of the cabal. She nods. What population we had left. They took a good chunk of it. And are throwing our people mindlessly into a war that I don't even know about. And we had, and we have, I finally was able to see a home that we made. We've been so scattered, but to know that there was a group of us holding out, it was that that station. It's it was a beacon. We don't have many left, and most of us are disbanding and haven't seen a Bond in years. They killed them all, Captain. She nods. I'm watching my civilization crumble. I'm watching my people be lost to history. We've already lost our culture, our home. The loss is tremendous. It is. And it is becoming extremely difficult for me to bear it. I'm trying to focus on the fact that they are gone. And to remember them. It's just hard to get back into that mindset. And I know that I have to protect you all too. Because you are my family. And you have already shown and proven. The kindness. That you can put out in the universe. I just want to aspire to that. This is a more difficult task than I thought it could be. It's not like being a pirate. She shifts her legs a little bit, um, still leaning against the door behind her. Um, her arms still folded. I know it's a little difficult to understand, but I too have lost a lot of friends in my time. And it is often hard to remember their life 
in comparison to how it ended, where it ended, why it ended. I don't have the luxury, as you do, to cry for them. But I try to honor them by being a better person. By being who they try to be. I'm sorry that you had to see that. I'm sorry that my power wasn't enough to help save as much as we could. And it is not a weakness to feel for that loss. But the only thing we can do is to keep moving forward and take time when we can to grieve for them, honor them. But that time isn't now. Do you understand? Yes, Captain. Even when it comes to our enemies, as much as often, we feel like we should avenge our friends, and we will when the time comes. Understand that we cannot also be our enemies. There will be much thoughts in you of retribution, of vindication. But that is not what our late friends, our late family, wish from us, do they? No. I will say one thing, Captain, I do not wish death on our enemies. That's one thing that I've appreciated of Starfleet. I want justice. And you're certainly better than your captain. She gives a small smile. Genuine smile. Even if you did, there's duty and honor of being better. You've done excellent here, Remora. We all care about you. Keep it up. All right. I won't let you down. Feel a little better? Determined. And better. Yes. yes. Talk with your friends or anyone you can when you're off shift. When you're on shift, I need you focused. Understand? I can. Good. She caps the communication. Yes. Sir, uh, we have uh, we have a visit on uh, vessels appeared on sensors directly ahead of us. Uh, Melnick's voice chimes in uh, immediately passing Crichton. We didn't detect them before because they were operating on extremely low power, but it's a uh, uh, the craft is Sulaban and make. She looks for Mara. I'm on my way. More runs to the helm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, she'll signal uh, Shira to get a, get on bridge. Copy that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's see. Would it be a? Would you be going directly for our, uh, intercept? Um. Yes. Or dropping out of warp. I guess is the question. Yes. 
Okay. So. Uh, there's a there's a brief time where we are. Uh, it will say that commercial break would normally happen during this time, or there would just be the cut ahead to uh, the Aegis dropping out of warp, a flash of light behind it as the uh, burst of its warp bubble and the expulsion of gamma radiation bursts out from behind it. Your approach from the aft of this vessel, um, what appears uh, by recognition to be a salvaging style ship, uh, a, a freighter, um, a very angular in design with numerous pods kind of stretching off of it. Uh, at the at the point where we look back in on the crew of the Aegis, uh, it's condition red. Uh, we're not taking second chances on any of this shit. We've had this happen before. Let's not make. Let's make sure it's not bait. Yep. So we come back onto. We come back onto the bridge. And Klaxon is already blaring as the ship is on standby. Uh, Shira has made her way onto the bridge at this point, and Melnuk is reporting from her sensor com er, from the science station. Uh, I'm picking up 47 Suleban bio signs. Uh, looks like she's got, I'd say, minor hull stresses, but no signs of any sort of weapons impact. No sign of any Kizinti bio-signs, elevated radiation, and as far as the sensor protocol is concerned to track their warp fields, I'd say they're probably not in the area. Again, I'm still working up the kinks with it, sir. Crichton, send a message to the Suleban ship, give them, their, uh, give, us, give them our apologies, as we want to be absolutely sure that it's just the two of us and Malnick as deep of a scan as you want here loud as possible i don't care about f fragging their their scanners in the process i want to make sure our ship and theirs are safe and this isn't one of their tricks now yep. nook will start on that uh Creighton says uh, sir the uh, the Sulabon are replying to our hail they are uh, they are the well, Captain Houghton would like to speak with you, sir. On screen. Do we have visual? Oh yes, sir. We we have a token for it. Nice. Well, we we actually we actually have visuals for once. Wow, that's great. Mm. Yeah. This is where the budget's going. I see. <laughs> hey, we're near the back end of the season. So, someone turned on the. <laughs> someone finally turned on the view screen. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You. Oh wait, I've. I've heard of this. I know this. Uh, humans, right? Yes. Um, Starfleet, <laughs> the the SS Aegis, and this is the Colonel Sharp, captain of the ship. Oh, thank goodness! I, I, I have, granted, I've, uh, I've, it, I, well, I've never seen humans. I've never had the opportunity to be happy about them. But I am happy today is the day I get to meet you, Captain. I, it, my ship is in need of help. We. It, we, uh, I understand. We're willing to help help you as best as we can. However, I do apologize. We might do minor damage to your sensors as we want to make sure there's no hunters along with you. Do you understand? You've you've seen those Kazinti too, haven't you? We have indeed. Yeah. Give us one moment, Captain. Melnuk gives you a thumbs up, uh, indicating everything looks good on her sensors. Great. How can I help you, Captain? Well, it's... Uh, it's actually partly the Kizinti issue. We were, we were on a course attempting to escape. We were, well, we received a pod from our colony. It was apparently attacked, a, a station in the Lystragon system. Uh, we thought it was well hidden, but apparently not so much. Um, he's, I'm sorry for your loss. He, he's going uh, about a light year an hour right now, so... Captain. Uh, Captain. Captain. Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 sorry. Sorry. I'm going to breathe. I need you to speak slowly and clearly. I understood maybe half of that, but I cannot help you if I do not understand. My apologies. Uh, we need a little bit of work on our air scrubbers right now. We were going to put back into Lystragon in order to uh, affect some badly needed maintenance. 
uh, but we we found we had no choice, and I I had I have a small complement aboard my crew plus a, a small group of people that had escaped this apparent travesty. Um, but we were we were making a course for the uh, for a passage, something hidden, and well, that route's not uh, that's not going to work particularly well for us anymore. So we were. Well, we're hoping to catch another way, maybe the Kazinti aren't uh, headed in this direction, but we, that's when we happened upon you, and I, I saw that you were going to warp once we were sure enough of your warp signature, we thought we'd, uh, thought we'd follow you here. Uh, would you, would you be willing to escort us to a safe port or some other location? Could, if not that, could you at least spare some medical supplies or uh, repairs? And we're, I'm sorry, Captain, my... We are not outfitted for combat uh, operations. I understand. I barely do my mind. Yes, give, give us one moment, Captain. She signals Crichton to turn off the view, view screen and audio. She look over to Shira. Uh, Shira and um, is Romanov up here. Uh, Romanov no. can be up here if Romanov wants to be up here. Does Romanov, Romanov want to be, be up here? Yeah, Romanov's up there. She's yep. checking some uh, she, engineering stuff as she's coordinating a uh, crew from the engineering station on the bridge. Yeah, she crawls out of the uh, she crawls out of the duct work in order uh, in order to um, even better. Yep, with a bit of grease on her uniform and cane, she mans the engineering station, leaning on it. I know we're in the red for a number of things, but how bad are we for supplies? How bad are we for supplies? Not great, but if I mean, if somebody were struggling, you might be able to. It would depend upon the part. You might be able to spare them, or at least give them a tune-up. We could probably give them a tune-up, spare a few parts, some supplies. We we've got a little bit of cushion there. Uh, I I know. Um... In the future, where you have tractor beams, you can do a warp tow. But could you do that with grappling hooks? <laughs> uh, that doesn't work so well. The... No? Okay. Just making sure. Romanov, how badly beat up is our life support at the current moment? GM. Uh, life support's probably a bright spot here. That's a bright spot, ma'am. We're doing okay we certainly have, there. We certainly have provisions to take on extra passengers. And we they could undoubtedly have their own. Assuming we can't get their ship repaired and underway. The question is how much time do we want to spend here repairing it? Correct. And uh, we also are trying to prep for an unknown corridor transit. Um, we could target certain systems with teams over there. Um, Romanov, escort. Romanov, Romora, Shira, I want the three of you to go talk with the... have more closer inspection of that ship. We'll probably make a dock if they are allowing it. I want you to give a quick assessment, both tactically and engineering of what they can do versus if possibly we need to take them along with us. I doubt that ship can move very fast. And if it has a more capable stealth capability, then perhaps they can just simply tug their way back to a safer harbor on their own. But right. certainly, certainly this is much more manageable situation in which we can try to take care of somebody. They did mention... That concealed passage? Talk with them about it. Romora? If they know anything about it, it would be, this is actually very, very worthwhile. The more Mal I know. Yeah. Malnyuk uh, visibly froze her brow before uh, immediately turning back and uh, like going straight for the, the visor scanner so that you know that she is serious. Ow. <laughs> just just a minute, Captain. Mm. Under a breath, a light. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, sounds good. What? I like it. 
can we compare sensor readings if they if their course heading is where I think they were from? She just nods. Do it. Do, do you want me to reopen the channel then, sir? Yes. Get it, gal. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the the I'm... frazzled captain, uh, the frazzled captain Hone appears on your uh, sensors once again, uh, which I realize. I'm I sorry, very briefly, Captain. I do have a, a, a brief question uh, before we continue, Mister uh, Captain Hone. The frazzled captain uh, looks ahead and uh, raises where his eyebrows would be. They're more just pronounced cranial ridges with the sort of... Would uh, it be possible if you can give us your navigational data to show us the path that you took? as we certainly are on a bit of a journey ourselves, and we want to make sure um, just on something we're a little curious about. Oh, yes, of course. It, it, it's a, it just waving his hand. It's like, yes, send them that. All of it. I, I don't care. It, no, uh, make it the past past few cycles only. Yes, good. Yeah, that should be... She looks, to, she looks to Mjolnir. She gets side glance at Mjolnir without, if that's the, like, the round amount of data they need. I'll, uh... In the visor scanner, you hear slightly louder, shit, shit, shit. One second, Captain. She cuts the audio. What? Captain, their vessel was, uh, their vessel's coming from the Messine system. And I know why they, uh, I know why they turned around, why I'm picking up unusual gravitational waves. Why? Oh, just the fact that there are stars being eaten by a class three singularity. Oh. Got a black hole. She just closes her eyes. Very, she very slowly closes her eyes, ex takes a slow exhale. She nods to, she like gestures for crying dead. Like, without lifting her head, she just started crying to, uh, to turn the audio back on as she puts on her best diplomatic face. Captain, we're more than willing to help you where we can. I am sending my best engineer and my uh, top security officer to help out anywhere we can. Um, we also have a, a Suliban upon our, uh, upon our crew who would be more than glad to see a friendly face. Oh, oh, good. Yes, they're, by all means, they're welcome here. And, uh, bring who you want, bring who can help, and we'll, we're happy to help. I, no, I, I'm actually feeling pretty good about myself and uh, my chances right now. That's, this is, I think we're going to have a good day. Yes. Well, all right, prepare for docking procedures, Captain. We will dock very shortly. Uh, sure thing. Captain, before, before I close this communication the subspace corridor on the Messine system is it still there oh oh it, well yes it's still there but I, I mean between the black hole and the sto uh, the stellar flares it's pulling from it it's uh, there's I couldn't take my ship through that I it would be safe and prudent of course thank you uh, we will dock with you in a few minutes. Uh, Mr. Ramora, if you can, please. And she'll just signal right to end the communication. With the giving it the professional courtesy of not being, uh, of not broadcasting it while uh, he is there, Melnick just starts pounding the console. Shit, shit, shit. God damn it. That's enough, Miss Melnick. She says, no, exhale. Permission to speak, Captain? Is it... Uh, she pauses. Is it appropriate? Yes, Captain. She gives you a smile, like a very minute nod, but a nod. Although though I am optimistic that these are this other Sulaban. I should know that we should worry that these could be Cabal. Understood. 
Shira, bring two te- uh, bring both teams of oh no, bring one team of Makos with you. Keep the other one next to the uh, docking port. Go there, Captain. Make sure that they are frequently scanning at all times for any um, cloaked uh, cabal. Got it. Mjolnir, go with the team. Try to get as much data as you can from their data banks. This isn't over. She'll stand up and gain her composure as much as you can. And um, as the as everyone prepares for the task, Sharp, you very much hope that this does not spell the end, as you say. I think that if that she has be... to, if she has to guide between a star and a black hole, like she might, she freaking might get this job done. Well, we will find out next week when we come back for the next part of our session here in Star Trek Adventures Aegis. Uh, so, for those of you in the archive, this is where we are going to leave off. I hope that you enjoyed today's session, and we will be back. If you ever want to drop into these live, we run these games 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturdays. That's 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Until then, see you around.